Okay, so today we will learn what a group means and we will see some examples for groups. But at the beginning, I really want you to understand or to know the motivation behind defining a group. Actually, the reason for such a definition is very intuitive. As we see here, it's asked it asks when does an equation of this form has a solution? A very simple question. We mean we want to substitute an element inside x and then multiply it by a or do some operation between x and a so that we get b. So in other words, the question is in which systems, which systems allow us to solve such an equation? What do we, what do we mean by a system? Let me go back here to the equation. Here I said we have some operation. I will just call it for a while star. It could be usual multiplication that we know. It could be the usual addition. It could be multiplication modulo n or addition modulo n. It could be multiplication of matrices. Or it could be composition of functions. So this is called a binary operation between a and x. So I'm asking here if that equation has a solution which means can I find an element that I substitute in x and do binary operation with a then the result will be will be the, the element b. And then here I'm going to go back and ask which systems allows us to solve this equation which means where the elements a and b come from which systems the real numbers the rational numbers complex numbers or integers natural numbers maybe maybe they are matrices so the nature of the system the elements inside that system and the operation defined between the elements in, the, in that system so what kind of systems that allow us to solve such an equation? In other words, we mean where shall A and B, where shall A and B shall come from so that this equation has a solution and this is what I just explained already. We note here at the right that we will avoid having A to be zero. So we want to, to avoid an element zero. So if zero lives in the system, we exclude it. Okay. For, for the usual multiplication, okay. We exclude the zero. Now, so what, which systems allow us to solve such an equation? So this is the idea behind the defining uh, groups. We want systems that allow us to solve such equations. What do we mean by allowing us to solve? We mean that system will enjoy some properties that allow us to make some, move, some movements to reach a solution. Okay, for instance, we may take A and B to be two uh, uh, rational, positive, rational, uh, so, sorry, two non-zero rational numbers belongs to Q star. Q star here means that non-zero rational numbers. Or A and B, we may take them to be non-zero real numbers or non-zero complex numbers. Then we solve the equation AX equals B. To solve that equation, we must have the following. So we must do the following. Okay. So, for instance, I chose A and B to be two elements from one of these rational numbers, real numbers, or complex numbers, the non-zero elements. And we denoted them uh, by uh, Q star, R star, and Z star. 
and then I want to uh, work with this equation ax equals b inside any of these systems q star r star and z star so let me use the letter g here to denote any of them so it might mean q star or it means r star or c star and let's see what we do to solve uh, this equation okay so first thing you do you multiply by 1 over a so I have a dot here uh, representing that I am doing now a usual multiplication the usual multiplication we know so first thing we need to do is to multiply both sides by 1 over a if 1 over a is not in G in the system then we cannot solve so in order to solve such an equation we need to have 1 over a so this is the very first axiom that we must have in hand so that we solve the equation and that means we have the multiplicative inverse okay now let's look at it here what we do next from here to here what we do next we reordered the elements the priority of multiplications are we allowed to multiply a and 1 over a and leave x alone and then we multiply it if we are allowed to change the order of multiplication I multiply the first two and then the third one or the second and the third with the first one does that make a difference it shall not make a difference if we want to solve ax equal b so we must have that in hand and it is called associativity in G okay now on the other hand in here we must have the result of such multiplication to still belong to G okay notice that a can be any element in G which means 1 over a can be any element so the idea here if I multiply any element in G with any other element in G I want the result to stay to be in G and we will call this closed under multiplication so far we needed uh, one here the multiplicative inverse and we needed two the associativity and we needed three closure and the multiplication and we will state these properties explicitly so let's keep going solving this equation now when I multiply 1 times a by a I get 1 so I need to have such an element 1 what does that element do it multiplies x and it gives us x so 1 times x is x it changes nothing and now x here can be any element from G we're looking for a solution in that G to give it substituted in X so X may take any element in G now the idea one times any element gives that element this is natural you know it because you know the one and in the usual, usual multiplication but in here it's it is uh, uh, we need to state it that we have an element which is one here that we multiply it by any other element in the G and then we get that other element unchanged in here this is uh, wrong I must write multiplicative it is important multiplicative identity we call one multiplicative identity so people now good we have we have a uh, four we have four axioms that need to satisfy every element must have an inverse multiplication as associative uh, a multiplication is closed the set is closed under multiplication and there is an identity element for the multiplication okay now you know that such an equation ax equals b can be solved in r in the rational numbers q or in R or in C and now that means for us now in each of the following systems non-zero rational numbers with the usual multiplication see the way I wrote it here 
real numbers non-zero with usual multiplication complex numbers with usual multiplication if you don't know complex numbers yet don't worry so I wrote this parentheses and the set and the operation this is a new expression which we will call group if that set and that operation satisfy the following axiom 1 now the naming here I, I just made uh, gave names here if you want the names of the axioms there to uh, match with uh, the names here so I will go and read and say uh, I will call this axiom 1 and I will call this 2 and uh, this is uh, 3 and this is 4 so we want these axioms to be satisfied so we notice that in these systems these axioms are satisfied so axiom 1 if I have two elements in G and I multiply them the resulting shall stay in G and we say G is closed under multiplication so I think you see now we must G must enjoy that property if we want to solve A times X equals B axiom 2 says that if I have three elements for any for any three elements in G it doesn't matter if I multiply the last two and then multiply it with the first one or I multiply the first two and then multiply it with the last one it does not matter the order of multiplication does not matter and this is called associativity axiom 3 we must have an element here it is 1 because G so far denotes the non-zero rational numbers or real numbers or complex numbers so we, we we have the one we already know just the number one the usual one so that if we multiply that identity with any number the result is that number unchanged and this is called multiplicative identity and axiom number four it says for every element in G there is another element in G which we call B such that B times A or A times B will give us one one is the identity and here we will say B is a inverse we will call uh, a multiplicative inverse and we had we have talked about it here uh, when we uh, learned about the N B, if B is the inverse of A then A is the inverse uh, of B okay so for axioms if we have them then we can solve the equation ax equal b and this is what is written here oops oops okay so having axioms 1 to 4 being satisfied will make us call any one of these a group now simply what is a group a group is a set with some operation star these things are together called the system this system allows me to solve a star x equals b now i am saying here star because the operation can be anything instead of multiplications the one we just saw again so the group is a set with operation star that allows me to solve such an equation this is simply the group and to solve such an equation we need to have inverse of a and a can be any number of g so for any number a and g we must have an inverse okay uh, let me let me sorry let me repeat that let me say them in order in order to solve that equation the order which is listed uh, what we will see because we we need to give numbers for the axioms and we refer to this numbers later so we need to fix the numbers of the axioms so uh, the axiom number one is if I have two elements inside the set, the set and then I make binary operation between these two elements the result will be another element a new element in G I want that to stay in G to be in G 
So first we need G to be closed under the operation star. Second, it shall not matter if I make operation between three elements, A star, B star, C, it shall not matter which two I choose first to make an operation. This is associativity. Number three, there must be an identity element so that that identity element star any other element in G gives me that element unchanged for for any element in G there must be another element such that if I do the binary operation I get the identity of axiom 3 so I wanted to say them by words before we look at them uh, here uh, before I look, uh, I show you the definition. But uh, let me do some discussion before I take you the definition. I want to go here. See, this says none, none of any of these. Z is not a group with under under multiplication. When I say a group or not a group, I must have a set and a combined operation in mind. So I cannot say a set is not a group. This does not make sense. Is a set with some operation? It might be a group. It might be not. Okay. So with with uh, multiplication here, did I say addition? Multiplication here. None of these is a group. But we have seen already above there that Q star, R star, and Z star are groups under multiplication. Now what is the the difference here? If I do not exclude the zero, then things will fail to be a group because the zero, this equation has no solution. So I excluded the zero. Now, same thing, same reason applies for Z and Zn. They are not, they are not groups. Actually, there is another reason that I want to say here why Z and multiplication is not a group okay one reason is that uh, zero does not have an inverse uh, but uh, here too belongs to Z and uh, one is the identity of Z the multiplicative So it has a multiplicative identity. So let me see here that Z and plus satisfies all axioms. If I take two integers and multiply, the result is an integer. So Z is closed under multiplication. If I take three integers and multiply them, it does not matter who I multiply first. So multiplication is associative in Z. I have identity of multiplication in Z. So the three axioms, the first three, three axioms are satisfied, but the last axiom is not satisfied. That's because 2 is in Z, but 2 inverse, which is 1 half, is not in Z. Okay? Good. Uh, good, okay. Now, and also I want to uh, write something here. Zn, let me choose Z4 with multiplication. This is also not a group. All axioms, a closure under multiplication, associativity, and the identity, which is one, they all satisfied except the inverse. Uh, because, let's see here, because 2 times x equals 1 has no solution in Z4. Has no solution in uh, Z4, okay? And try that. Z4 is 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 3. Multiply each one of these numbers with two, and then uh, you will get, you will not get uh, you will not get a solution. Okay. 
Good. So we have seen Q star, R star, Z star with multiplications are a group. But Z, Zn, Q, R, and C, the complex numbers, including the zero, are not groups uh, for, for certain reason. Okay. Now here we will give the formal definition for groups. Now, we will say this, okay, a group, a group is what? Is a non-empty, non-empty set G equipped with a binary operation star that satisfies the following axioms. So we have G and the star. Now we are going more general. We are going abstractly. We are in abstract algebra. Now we have a group G and operation star. It could be addition. It could be multiplication. It could be subtraction. It could be division. It could be uh, composition between functions. If G consists of functions. And maybe G consists of matrices. So the operation could be addition of matrices or multiplication of matrices. So star means any operation uh, we might think of. Okay, so this is axiom one, so we need to keep tracking of this number. Closure. If I choose A and B in G, then the resulting A star B, the resulting element of this uh, operating these two elements must stay in G. Axiom two, associativity. It does not matter. I do operation between the last two or the first two, and that applies for all elements in G. Axiom 3, the identity element, the identity element, such that A star E, E star A d does nothing for the element A, it leaves A as it is. 4, for each element A in G, there exists D, which is called the inverse of A, such that A D is the identity and D A is the identity. Now, this is an extra axiom here, which is axiom 5. Now we are done. Actually, to define a group, we are done. These are the axioms of groups. Okay? Up to here. 1, 2, 3, and 4. If an extra axiom holds, which is 5, which means if I take two elements and make the operation between them, does it matter which I put first and then later? after the places does it matter of the places a star b or b star a some groups does matter on some groups does not matter whenever does not matter which means a star b is b star a then we will say this operation is commutative and we will call this group to be abelian group abelian when the operation is commutative, when the order of elements, the, the two elements does not matter. Who comes first, who comes after. We will call it a billion group. Okay. Now, a group, a group might be finite. The groups we have seen so far, uh, three kinds of group, Q star, R star, Z star. None of them is, inf uh, is finite. All of them are infinite. It could be finite or a, fi a finite order if it has a finite number of elements if the set we are using is finite and we will simply uh, write g this is a notation whenever it's finite to be uh, the number how many elements the number of elements in g so this is this is called the order in G of G, and we will uh, use it later. So this is the order of G, order of G, number of the elements, and we will not talk about order of G unless G is finite. If it is infinite, we don't care. We say it's infinite, and then we 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 ha it had nothing to do with us later. So a group is called infinite if the number of ele uh, of element is infinite, and we say we say a group has infinite order. Okay, let us see examples of groups. Now, we have many examples that comes together 
add uh, z the integers all the integers positive negative including the zero they are a group um let's let's see here q r and c the complex number and z n each one of them is a group including the zero so what's happening here am i contradicting myself with the multiplication i had I had to exclude the zero so that I get a group but with addition I have no problem here the operation has been changed to addition and in such a case we have a group now I want you to look at this we started with equation a star x equals b and we wondered which systems allow us to solve that equations and we will call such a system group now our star here the operation is plus so our question will be which systems allow to us to solve this equation a plus x equals b and then we will call it a group under addition because the operation now is addition so which systems allow us to do that apparently integers including the zero so we have no problem now like the equation zero plus x has a solution no problem zero plus x equals uh, equals b it has a solution which is x equals b so we have no problem with the x with the zero here because we are changing the binary operation it is a plus now so each one of these is a group and to prove that we need to go through the axioms one two three and four and extra axiom five all of them are satisfied here but going through these axioms for each one of them is similar it is similar for all of them so we will just do verify the axioms assuming that the elements in hand uh, comes from any one of these sets z or ZP or rational numbers real numbers and complex numbers and here what we do now first thing each system is closed under addition so we have axioms 1 2 so it's trivial any two real numbers add them we get real number if they are rational numbers add them we get rational numbers two numbers from Z in add them take modulo n then we get a number in z n same thing for integers so this is easy and it is just a basic arithmetic property addition in each of these systems is associative we know these systems and we know the addition you have been working them since elementary school and you know this is happening where a b and c might be all of them are integers or real numbers or complex or rational numbers or from z n in one of the, our lectures previous lectures we proved that addition modulo n is associative right okay now what is the identity the addition identity is zero so axiom 2 is satisfied axiom 3 now what about axiom 4 what is the inverse of a is negative a given any number a inside any of these systems real or rational or complex or integer the negative image of it is its inverse according to addition but when we were working with multiplication the inverse of a was 1 over a 1 over a is the inverse of a under multiplication minus a is the inverse of a under addition okay now and we know that addition is commutative for any of these two systems so any one of these uh, groups here is not only a group it is also an abelian so i will say here go back here and say in any one of them is an abelian abelian group it is a group any one of them but also uh, also it is abelian group let me write th that word because it is a, a new word to you abelian abelian group abelian is named after some mathematician whose name is apple so uh, and he defines such a thing uh, 
at the beginning so they, they call it abelian abelian group okay <coughs> now here for uh, uh, the coming topics to study here there thereafter when we say this is a group this is a group this is a group but now we might talk about them as groups without referring to uh, which operation we are using and uh, the only case any of these is a group is whenever the operation is addition so it is understood that the operation is addition so when we talk about them as groups using Q only R only or Z only writing this only without operation uh, it shall me it shall be meant automatically that we mean these uh, sets with addition okay now let us see more uh, examples <coughs> example let's take zp star notice the star here the star will always mean we want to exclude the zero so that will be the non negative elements in p where p is prime then under multiplication this is an abelian group and we will use what we learned about zp okay now we want to prove it is closed under multiplication which means if we take any two elements from there they are non-zero elements right and then when we, then we multiply them and take modulo p we will get a non-zero element how we guarantee that this is by a theorem we proved which says if we choose two non-zero element the multiplication is non-zero take it modulo p then we are there so it is closed under multiplication closure holds multiplication is associative we have seen that in zn in general identity element is one you can see it quickly the inverse element okay how do we know the inverse element this is axiom number four and it is this is guaranteed by two point theorem 2.8 uh, if a belongs to z p and a is not uh, zero then there exist uh, then uh, uh, there exists uh, b uh, let me write it the way you used to see it then uh, the equation a x equals one has a solution right now whatever we substitute in x here makes a dot b whatever we substitute in x say b then a dot b equals one so b is the inverse of a so every element in zp we have another element which might be the same as one this one and we multiply them we get one so every element has an inverse in cp so we got an abelian group now let's see a q double star q double star r double star we mean the uh, positive rational numbers or positive real numbers then the each one of them is an abelian group okay so closed under multiplication yes if you if you take any two positive numbers and multiply you get a positive so we are still in the same set the product uh, um, this is multiplication and what about associative they are they are just numbers and you know multiplication of numbers is, is associative and the identity is one on the multiplication and the inverse here is one over a so if a is positive if a is positive then 1 over a is positive so it lives inside the system okay so these are other examples of abelian group let's see a specific example here let us choose l to be the set consisting of 1 negative 1 i and negative i i assume that each one of you knows what what this sample is for i is an element from the complex numbers such that i 
is defined to be it is an imagine, imaginary number the negative uh, the square root of negative 1 or we mean it is i square equals negative 1 so it is an imaginary number okay now if we do multiplication this represents the multiplication and I want to see if whether uh, this group uh, L with multiplication uh, here we are saying it is an abelian group oh let's let's make sure this is happening now uh, this represents the multiplication table like if we multiply uh, I by I we get negative 1 which is inside L and then if we multiply uh, negative I by negative I so we have negative by negative positive I by I is negative 1 so we get negative 1 so we are in L so I will let you look at this multiplication table of multiplication so this table guarantees that L is closed under multiplication but now question is what is the inverse of I what is the inverse of I I need to find an element from L that I multiply with I I get 1 1 is the identity as you see one is the identity so let's look at it this is i if i go here this is one here so i need to multiply i i need to multiply i by negative i so the inverse of i is negative i and so the inverse of negative i is i and the inverse of negative one let me write that inverse of negative 1 is negative 1 okay because if I multiply them I get the identity which is I and maybe I will write here 1 is the identity of L okay now identity uh, exists the inverse for each element exists uh, they are closed under L is multi closed under multiplication and what's about associativity we are authorized here to so to see these elements come from the complex numbers and complex numbers enjoy the associative property so these ones enjoy the associative property okay Okay, other examples of uh, not non groups. Each one of these is not not a group. Z star the uh, non zero integers. So positive and negative integers. And the natural numbers or the positive natural numbers. Let's see. Why this is not a group? Because uh, two or same this time three belongs to z star but it has no inverse in z star the inverse is one over three one over three is not in z star so this is not a group this is not a group okay why this is not a group z star with addition not a group because it does not what is the additive identity it does not contain the additive which is zero additive identity so actually this set here satisfies all the axioms of the group the inverse to satisfy the inverse if I take any number in z star which is integer then the inverse of it is a negative image of that integer but when I add them together I get zero but zero does not live there so this is not a group okay natural numbers with multiplication is not a group for same reason three belongs to the natural numbers and uh, the inverse does not belong to the natural numbers uh, with addition why this is not a group you can say five belongs to the natural numbers but negative five which is the inverse 
does not belong to the natural numbers or the zero does not belong to the natural numbers the uh, the additive identity because we are using here addition okay when n is composite see this is interesting uh, uh, example another interesting example of not a group when n is composite we mean uh, not a prime when n when this n is not a prime then this is not a group not uh, a prime then it is not a group under multiplication so this is let me write here this is not a, this is not a group why it is not a group uh, because it will have many zero divisors in there actually I mean uh, you know that the the units the units you remember the unit in zn the elements that have multiplicative inverse and there are other elements in zn that do not have multiplicative inverse the general reason why it is not a group uh, if a is inside zn but the greatest common divisor between a and n is not one which is greater than one then we learned from a previous theorem that a is not a unit in zn and what does that mean it means uh, a does not have a an inverse and by inverse here we mean multiplicative multiplicative inverse okay so uh, you must go and try why for instance z6 with multiplication is not not a group and uh, this is abbreviation for group and you go off to uh, number two or three each one of these and four each one of these has no inverse just try it and how do you know it has no inverse multiply it with all elements inside z6 and none of them will give you uh, a, a one the identity one as a result of multiplication okay example one more example this is an interesting example in here it says <clears throat> we will take un to be the set of units inside the n let me write that un to be the set of units uh, but let me write it in a better way okay it is written here okay good good i mean i mean it is defined here i already put it here this the set of units in Zn and you know the units of Zn we have done some examples and now uh, it is written here uh, Un consists of all integers inside Zn such that each one of these integers is relatively prime with n so we know that now the one uh, uh, is in un okay because it is relative prime to one and now we say uh, the group this is a group under multiplication it is an abelian group under multiplication why because now the one is in there the identity is in there if you give me two units each of them is relative prime to n and then multiply and get the result multiplication it will be relative prime to n also okay or if I get two units, let me write that here. It is it is actually an exercise in the book. Uh, if A belongs to Zn, let me see, B and A belongs to Un. So that means uh, A inverse and B inverse belongs to Zn. And since A is a unit, B is a unit, because A is the inverse of A inverse, and A inverse is the inverse of A so and b is a unit b inverse is a unit now multiply a times b 
Multiply it by what? B inverse A inverse. And then what you get? Use associativity. We will get that. B times B inverse times A inverse. And that equals now B times B inverse is 1. So we get A times 1 times A inverse. And that equals A times A inverse. And that equals 1. Now what we got, we, what we have proved here. We proved that A times B, we found an element that we multiplied by A times B and we got 1. Which means uh, A times B is a unit. It has an inverse. So it is in N. So that so shows that UN is closed under multiplication. Okay? So identity is there, closed under multiplication. Associativity happens because elements of UN are coming from the N. And associativity is achieved there. And uh, what, what's left? The inverse, associative, close, everything. Okay, the identity is one. Now, to have a feel uh, of that, a specific uh, example is uh, Z8. So we have here uh, the elements of U8. Now, you know that, you, that uh, the units inside Z8, we have worked them as an example. The numbers that are relatively prime to 8 are 1, 3, 5, 7. Okay. And this is the multiplication table of these numbers. And we are multiplying here modulo 8. Like if you say 5 times 5, it is 25. So it was 1. Oh, great. So 5 inverse, 5 inverse is 5. We are working inside Z8 or inside U8 here. Okay. Now 7. Let me use other color. 7. Oops. 7 times 7. It's 1. Oh, interesting. So 7 inverse is 7 in U8 or in Z8 here. Now uh, another multiplication. Uh, 5 times uh, 7 which is 35, modulo 8, which is 3, and so on. So uh, you must have fun with that. Now I recommend you to go to uh, U10. Take the units of uh, inside Z10 and do multiplication table. Repeat the same process again with the U15 and do the multiplication table. And find the inverse, for example, the inverse of 7 in U15 equals 1, while find the inverse of 7 in uh, U10, and find it equals what? Okay, the general linear group of order 2, so we have achieved most of what we want. Now we want to see a special, uh, an example uh, of uh, groups and which is called general linear group of order 2 over the real numbers. What does that mean? Uh, it means I want to take all matrices, 2 by 2 matrices, where these entries are from real numbers. Any one of them can be any real number. So the 2 here means 2 by 2 matrices and the set here means real numbers now I want to say that we can define uh, we can define let me write this S sorry this is not S this is GL so we can f define G general linear group this is GL 2 by 2 matrices but the entries from Q Okay, same thing. We can define general linear group of order 2, of degree 2, but the entries from complex numbers. Or you can define general linear group of order 2, but the entries from ZP. All of these, all of these are groups. They are not a billion. Any of this is a group. Okay, but if, we, if you think about a general GL of 2 and you have Z here, Z, then this is not, uh, not a group. This is not a group. Why it is not a group? Let's see what's happening here. 
and then uh, you, you, you will know it uh, by yourself. Now, I would like to uh, redefine this general group of degree two in a different way than in the book. So I will say they consist of, it's not very different than the book, consists of matrices A, B, C, D, such that A, B, and C, and D are real numbers, but I will write here determinant of A is not zero. Because it is it's not different, it's the same thing as definition here. But the book assumes that you don't know what is the determinant of a matrix. The book assumes that you know nothing about matrices, the multiplication, the addition of matrices. So the book will explain that. But you already know that, so we will uh, benefit of this. Now, uh, the multiplication of matrices, multiplication of matrices is associative. And the identity element, we know the identity matrix is I, 1, 0, 0, 1. So the identity exists and the associativity happens. So you know from the algebra course that multiplication of matrices is associative. Now, every matrix in this uh, set has an inverse. How, how we know it has an inverse? Because the determinant is not zero and you know how to compute the inverse. A matrix, a square matrix has an inverse if and only if the determinant is not equal to zero. And uh, it is closed under multiplication. Indeed, if you multiply two matrices, two by two, then you get two by two matrix. So this is a group, indeed. But it is not abelian. Why it is not abelian? You can uh, simply uh, choose two elements, two, two matrices, two elements from this group, like say, three, negative one, uh, two, four, uh, times uh, negative one uh, zero one three and then change change the multiplication it will not it will it will not equal uh, negative one zero one three so I did this just quick uh, make sure make sure this multiplication is not equal if you change the place of matrices the result may change and you already know that okay now in here, down here, I'm saying, uh, try that again with uh, these, but the entries from ZP or from the complex number or from Q. Uh, for example, try the general linear group of degree two where the elements are from Z5. Uh, this is, this is uh, a finite element. Let's call it G. Uh, this is a group, this is a finite group. So uh, my question here, uh, can you think what is the order of G here? I am saying how many two by two matrices you can make where the entries, the four entries are from Z5. How many one of them? And if you wanna have fun, pick a matrix from there and find its inverse where computations are modulo five, Z5. This, this will be really fun if you do it. And I hope it is there in the exercises. Okay, here we have uh, just what I wanted to say, the general linear group with Z2, Z2. So these elements here, here, or here, or here, uh, are matrices such that the determinant is not uh, zero. And be careful when you do these multiplications, you are working modulo 2. So the question again, uh, if this is G, then how many elements in here? How many matrices, how many 2 by 2 matrices you can make? Where A, B, C, D are from Z2. How many you can make? Do you know? 2 by 2 by 2 by 2, 16 matrices. There are 16 matrices. But you will not take all of them. Take the ones that has non-zero determinant. Find them out. So a uh, uh, good exercise for you is to give the elements all the matrices uh, inside this group. Have fun with this. This is easier than in Z5 because we have just, in Z2 we have zero and one. 
just two limits, zero and one. Okay, so now this is the very last thing here, where uh, if we have, you, you already learned if you have two sets A and B, then you already learned that what does A cross B means, it means all the ordered pairs such that first element is from A, second element is from B. So you already learned that. Now if we start with a group G and a group H, the operation of a group G is donated by star, and the operation of H is donated by, uh, what do you call this? Parallelogram? Uh, 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 okay. So we will define G cross H, G cross S, the elements there are ordered pairs. How do you we define uh, operation between these ordered pairs? Now, we uh, denoted this by a square, black, a black square. I'm making it red here. How do we the operation? We take the first element and first element, first uh, coordinate of each ordered pairs. Now, these first elements are coming from the group that comes to the first, which is G. And do operation between them, the operation star, which is the operation of G. And then go to the second coordinates, they are coming from H. Do the operation between them, but the operation of H. This is what uh, we are saying here. The first uh, coordinates do them between them operation of G. The second two, co two coordinates, the operation of H. And uh, now uh, you know that the order of this uh, group is the multiplication of the orders of this element. Actually, this is again from uh, foundation of mathematics. The number of elements in the cross uh, sets is the multiplication of their uh, number of uh, elements in each one of them. And now here, if we have multiply Z6, sorry, if we make the cross product between Z and Z6. Now first coordinate here and here are coming from the integers. So we add them using the usual addition. So we get 3 plus 7, which is 10. But here the elements here are coming from Z6. So when we add them, we work modulo 6. So that will be 9, modulo 6 is 3. And zero zero is the inver uh, is the identity, while the inverse here, the inverse of seven inside Z, we already said when I say Z is a group, I mean addition. When I say R real numbers is a group, I mean addition. So the uh, the inverse of seven is negative seven, but the inverse of four in Z uh, in uh, Z six. Now we're talking about addition, right? Is two because four plus two is zero, because the uh, the group Z six will we said it is not a group under multiplication. So when we assume it is a group and form this cross product, we mean we are using addition. And same thing for Z. So the inverse of four of this four here. Uh, is 2 because 4 plus 2 is 0 okay and this uh, brings us to the end of uh, this lecture and thank you okay